The minimum wage bill is important. I think we're definitely going to have to take a look at it. Hello, friends. Welcome to Democratic Visions. I'm Nancy Nelson. Now, you know, our state senator, Melissa Franzen, is from District 49. She won a stunning victory in 2012 because District 49 is Edina, West Bloomington, and parts of Eden Prairie and Minnetonka. Guess how many Democrats they had elected to the Senate before Melissa? I'm sure it'll come to you quickly. Well, the Republicans were really shocked by losing in an area that they had long considered completely a lock on conservatism. This is interesting. Melissa's opponent in November was Representative Keith Downey. He couldn't win the election, so the Minnesota Republican Party rewarded the defeated Mr. Downey by appointing him chair of the party. That's a study and interesting, isn't it? Well, <laughs> what's interesting is that we get to welcome Senator Melissa Franzen. And the last time, Senator, that we talked, you were campaigning. And I said, if I've ever seen a winner, it's you. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be able to say hello, Senator. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. And of course, you've just come through the first session. We were so thrilled that you had that whole democratic system to work with, so frustrated that sometimes we thought the whole democratic system would be completely on our side, and it seemed to go in the other direction. But you had to learn how to work across the aisle. Was it frustrating, exhilarating, all of the above? All of the above, I would say, Nancy. First of all, it was drinking from a fire hose. There's lots to learn, lots of people to meet. I did focus completely on the legislative session. I took a leave of absence from my employer, who was um, gracious enough to uh, account for that. And I just dove right in and really lived at the Capitol, um, getting to know my colleagues, getting to know how the system worked, and trying to work within those rules. And it was uh, all of the above, invigorating, exciting, uh, stressful. Uh, everything that you can imagine, but it was very rewarding. Is there one or two arguments, debates, committee issues that stand out as the biggest deals for you in this first session of yours? Well, I was uh, really blessed to be there, first of all, to, to be representing a, a great district, and I was really humbled to, to do that work. And I took it very seriously. And one of the things that I that I was um, glad to be there in, in a historic vote was the marriage vote. And of course, um, I mentioned it to one of the staffers who had been there for 20, 30 years, and they and I asked a few of them, like, what was, what's was what been the most exciting um, vote you've ever seen? And they all, hands down, said that it was the marriage votes. So I stand here not as a mother, but I do want to bring that perspective into this discussion, this important discussion. As you were with your colleagues on the floor, there were a lot of people who were not only disappointed and vitriolic about their disappointment, but in many instances, I think with sincerity, some of them said, the devil now owns us and we're all going to go to hell. The, the, the strong belief that we should not have had that law had to impact you on some level with your colleagues. I had really great conversations from people that supported it and people who came to my office that were adamantly opposed to it and very respectful conversations about why I thought this was important, why I thought this was the equality and so social justice issue of our time and it's a personal issue a family issue for me as well so I thought that this was some um, I needed to stand firm on my beliefs and respectfully um, ask for you know their support in my decision thank you for doing that okay enough nice stuff I'm <laughs> really annoyed with you guys um, the governor wanted a minimum wage of 950 the house actually said okay let's do that and the Senate, my dear Senator, said, nah, let's do 775. I don't know where you came up with that dumb sure. number. And then at the end of the day, you did nothing. Sure. Uh, tell us about the dynamics of that because Absolutely. it's a real disappointment. It was. Um, and first of all, I start with saying that we did a lot of work in one session, that it was a lot of pent up demands from decades of, you know, neglect, if you will, in so many different areas. So we did a lot um, to stay, you know, to make sure that we go on the path of, of having the health exchanges and other um, important legislation that needed to happen. And like you the did budget. get it done. Correct. And thank you Correct. for that. So standing with that, um, starting with that, um, the, merit, the minimum wage bill is important. I think we're definitely definitely going to have to take a look at it, a uh, firm look next session. Um, we Partly is we ran out of time, partly is um, there was 
other areas that took a little bit more time um, at the end of session. Well, some of those debates took 17, 18 hours Correct. on <laughs> stuff like, and, and we kept thinking from the outside, are they serious? They're, they're trying to run down the clock, aren't they? It, it felt that way, and, and as a freshman senator, it, it certainly felt that we were running out of time and we needed to really focus on, on the things that really def definitely needed to get done, like the budget and other components of tax reform that were also handled. Um, so all in all, I think it was a very productive session. Yes. Uh, there's still work to be done, and there's still some uh, you know, work that needs to be addressed next session. And minimum wage, I think, will be at the top of the list. Can you give us any insight as to why the House and the governor said 950, which to me is still not enough, but that's just mm -hmm. me. And the Senate, where do you know how the Senate came up with a l number so low, 775? What I can tell you is that a sentiment of the Senate was that we were trying to do pile on a lot and that we wanted to make sure that we did the best to put Minnesota on course. And we have, in my opinion, we have the health care um, costs to businesses that we still don't know how that's going to come out. And so many other factors that we want to make sure that we're doing the right policy, making the right policy forward. Um, I think the, the, the numbers, you know, a lot of it comes from leadership, but um, certainly think we, we need to do better than 775, whether it's nine, um, you know, there's still a lot of room um, between those two numbers. So it's going to be interesting how the conversation um, goes next session. I think it's going to be a productive one. Um, you're a very young woman and very successful in your career. So what was it that called you into what most of us would perceive to be impossible work? Well, one of the things that's always um, made me think about running for office at one point in my career has been this desire to serve the public and do, do good. And I see that there is a gap in, in certain aspects of leadership and certain aspects of representation of the demographic that I represent, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big gap between, uh, you know, mostly retired folks who I really respect as colleagues in, in my in the Senate and in the, and in the House, but I think we, we need to have young voices there, professionals that are dealing with raising a family, that are dealing with um, paying their mortgage and coming out of, of debt from, from school and, and all those um, realities that we face on every day. And so we're going to have to make policies um, that take that into account, and I think I represent that voice. Are you one of the youngest members of the Senate? Actually, there's two other senators that are younger than I, but uh, we, we're, we're class probably of four that are the youngest um, in the Senate, uh, four or five. All of us pretty pretty passionate about the work we do on both sides of the aisles. It's really refreshing to see not only young uh, legislators, but also young women uh, with families um, trying to juggle a really, really stressful job and doing the best they can to represent their districts. Take us through the first day of school. Being a senator is a big deal. You show up and you don't have a clue as to where you are, what you're doing, who you're supposed to talk to. How does it work? Like anything else in, in a new job, you start trying to figure out uh, how the role, you know, role works and how the rules apply and learn the rules. That's always uh, something that's important in, in the Senate, I've learned. Uh, but you just really have to embrace it and jump in and, and try to learn as much as possible from colleagues um, that have been there uh, 20 years or been there two years. You still have a lot to learn from the process. It's all really based on seniority, so you do have to take that into account. But your opinion and, and your voice counts. I, I've learned that. Um, um, I, I've authored a, a last-minute amendment on transportation, and um, which was very controversial. Tell us about it. It was a very controversial Friday night um, after a, uh, a long battle trying to have a, a viable transportation bill that wasn't just a lights-on bill. And uh, frankly, I sit on that um, committee in the Transportation and Public Safety Committee, and our committee uh, did not want to pass lights-on bill. Um, the House had passed one, and we were just adamant that we were, we wanted more. So define lights-on in basically, case basically lights-on bill basically. Uh, having um, the status quo in terms of transportation, infrastructure funding, and transit. So we, we know we are, we're go moving behind. We're, we need to move forward in transportation investments, and we can't wait. It's going to be more costly the more years that we wait. So uh, we saw this as an opening to invest in transportation. We did a little step forward, but there's um, serious, um, another leap that we need to do next session. So I'll be sure to work on that next session with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, because transportation, uh, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat, it, it, it impacts all of us. When one authors something, you don't just sit down at your computer and say, oh, I think I'll use these words. There, there must be some specific forms, some specific manner in which things should be worded. 
Well, there's a lot of great staff that help you um, along the way, and there's certainly staff that puts the bill together, and if you have an idea, some of it comes organically. You meet with a constituent who has a need, and you put something together, and you work it, and you massage it until you have a, a good product to introduce. Other times, you're, you're, some of the organizations that represent different interests come to you and ask you to author a particular piece of legislation, and of course, you read them and figure out whether that's something you can support and champion, and if you feel strongly about it, um, I take it on and, and take it forward and make sure that uh, I do everything I can to um, pass it. Is there, as you came out of the last session, one particular thing that you feel you learned that is going to best aid you when you resume in 14? I think, you know, there's a lot of things that I, that I would certainly take with me for the next session. One of them is certainly um, work with your leadership, work with your colleagues, and find a common purpose and thread, and take some risk. I think that's uh, the, the first risk I took was running for office, and here I am. And, the secretary will take the role. And now it's about what do I feel strongly about that I think uh, I need to push and, and move forward, and I think it's good for the whole. And find those allies, um, however um, they come, and make sure that you are including um, your colleagues and, and make, make strides in, in progress in, in legislation for our state. Open doors and don't close them. And, and what is that old, uh, never burn a bridge? Never burn a bridge. Which brings us to, with your colleagues, your Democratic colleagues, as we've already noted, we always assume Democrats are going to do this, and mm -hmm. but that's not the case, particularly not in really. Minnesota. We're very independent thinkers. And so there obviously were disagreements. But how do those disagreements actually unfold behind closed doors? Well, it's it's a lot like what you see, you know, in in the line of daylight, broad daylight, when you have lobbyists come in, you basically are lobbying for something within the caucus, within the leadership. So sometimes um, leadership's not on board and you have to convince them. Sometimes it takes um, partnering with uh, more senior senators. Sometimes it's uh, having a coalition of freshmen. And, and the transportation bill, for instance, it took freshman women, actually, to move things along and asking our leadership that this is something that we are, feel strongly about and want to take a vote on. Even if it doesn't pass, we are sending a message that this is important for us. I'm looking at you and, and the, the promise that you represent for the, the, this young generation and how astute and intelligent and capable you are. And of course, I'm looking at, okay, she'll be in Washington and we will already have had Hillary as president and there's the next future. Have you even thought about what political chair you might want to be occupying in 10 years? Politics is very fluid. It really, um, you, you, don't, you, have any, you don't have a clue what's going to happen yes. next session and what challenges in votes you're going to have to take. So I think I'm taking one step at a time and embracing it, enjoying it, doing the best work that I can. Um, I didn't go to the Senate to, to be safe. I went there to work and that's the philosophy that I'll have. And if people like the work that I do, hopefully I'll be there uh, for the long haul. And, and that's the plan for now. You know, it was a real step of bravery on your part to even get into the race because, as we've already established, uh, Democrats are not highly elected from your specific area. And for a long time, you were considered a long shot. Isn't she cute? She's a very pretty young woman, and isn't that nice? And then the tables started to turn a little bit. Going into election night and watching the returns your folks are already looking at numbers and mm -hmm. you're dealing with percentages. How certain were you as the election you know, was unfolding that you were going to win? Did you think before election day that you had it pretty locked or was it still very iffy? I never had it locked. I always had a, a good um, gut feeling that I was on the right path, that it was, some of it, it's, um, in my hands and my control and that's why I worked so hard and, and a lot of people worked hard with me. Uh, so I always thought that win or lose, I worked the hardest I've ever worked in my life um, for uh, an office that I believe in and if it's meant to be, it's meant to be and I think um, you know the timing and everything um, came in our direction and it was in our favor and the results were frankly um, for me surprising. I thought it was going to be a lot tighter than that but uh, I, it's a true testament of the work that was put in the district so I, I shout out to all the supporters. Supporters sure do matter. Speaking of supporters, when I met you at my radio show before the election, uh, your dear husband 
was there with yes. you and looked as proud as any husband could, <laughs> looked a little like a deer in headlights, like, <laughs> okay, what are we doing here? How's he been? <laughs> He's been good. He's taking sailing lessons. While I was um, stuck at the legislature, he um, was starting to, you know, do uh, find a hobby because I'm, I was <laughs> never home. But um, that that's truly um, someone that has been my rock and I wouldn't be here without him. So Well, no, no question because the, the sacrifices, <laughs> yes. I don't think people understand for heaven's sakes, the, the moment you win, you're out uh, getting money for the next election. Have you missed a pogo stick jumping contest or an ice cream social in the last year? I don't think so. I'll see you in the 4th of July, the Dyna Parade. Here you are. <laughs> As I said when we began, what an utter pleasure to be able to say, Senator thank Melissa you. Franzen. Thank you so much. Good things. Thank you for your good work. It. Continued success. Thank, thank you, you like very this. much. Friends, thanks so much for being with us here on Democratic Visions. I'm Nancy Nelson sitting in for Tim O'Brien. I do hope you'll join me every Monday through Friday from 5 to 6 o'clock on AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota, right there on your radio dial. And I want to tell all of the wonderful volunteers here, and especially Jeff Strait, the work you do here for all of us who care about the progressive world in Minnesota is absolutely invaluable. I am so pleased you let me be a part of it. Democratic Visions is handcrafted by volunteers through DFL Senate District 48, Eden Prairie, and Minnetonka. Sharon Boreen, Chair.